Chair of the Department of Fine and Performing Arts. I'm Loretta Burns, Professor Emeritus of English and former Chair of the Department of English at Tuskegee University, and I will be presiding this evening. I'd like to welcome you to the 28th Annual William L. Dawson Institute Concert. The Dawson Institute for Folk and Classical Music was established to honor the life and work of the great William Dawson, one of this country's most important composers and arrangers. These programs are intended to recognize Dawson's achievements and to invoke the spirit of creativity and artistic integrity his achievements represent. And we're delighted to see all of you at this year's concert. Before we proceed, we ask that you silence your electronic devices for the duration of the program. At this time, Dr. Gregory Gray, Dean of the Chapel, will give the invitation. Good evening. Good evening. Let us pray. O oh, eternal God, may thy blessing touch the lives of those who have traveled from near and far to participate in the events of this Founders Day weekend here at historic Tuskegee University. Grant thy divine inspiration upon this annual William Levi Dawson Institute Yet do we marvel at the ways in which the arts give expression to the sacred, be it through music, dance, poetry, literature, painting, drama, sculpture. We're grateful for the ways in which this concert and the lifting of voices and other musical instruments may lift our spirits to what is highest and best and truly worthwhile in the human experience. May all that occurs here this evening represent a fitting and appropriate tribute not only to Dr. William Levi Dawson, not only to Tuskegee University, but to the fine and performing arts across the world. For the sake of the more excellent way we pray, let the people of God say amen. We begin our musical selections with the Tuskegee University Concert Band, conducted by Mr. John Q. Lenar, performing Jack Stamp's Gavortna Band.
University Alumni Choir under the direction of Mr. Ken Jones. The Tuskegee University Alumni Concert Choir was originally formed as the William L. Dawson Alumni Choir under the direction of Mr. Clyde Owen Jackson during the Tuskegee Alumni Biennial Conference in Indianapolis in August 1990. In 1996, Mr. Ken A. Jones became the director and the choir was renamed the Tuskegee Alumni Concert Choir. Mr. Jones, who is a Tuskegee native, earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical Engineering from Tuskegee University in 1990 and for the past 31 years has been employed as an engineer at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville. While at Tuskegee, who is a member of the Golden Voices Concert Choir, directed at that time by the late Roy E. Hicks. He was very active with the choir and had the opportunity to conduct the hymns and the Happy Birthday Congregational Singing during William L. Dawson's 90th birthday celebration on September 24, 1989. Under Mr. Jones's leadership, the Alumni Choir has performed at Alumni Biennial Conferences held in Tuskegee, New Orleans, Chicago, and Las Vegas. The choir is blessed by the representation and active participation of its devoted members and the dedication of its director. Mr. Kim Jones and the Tuskegee University Alumni Choir.
Good evening. My name is Dr. Mark Butler. I'm from Florida A&M University with the Florida A&M University Concert Choir. We're here this evening to celebrate the commemorative uh, festival of William Dawson. Uh, all the contributions that he's made to music and to the choral music we're here to celebrate. We're excited about this evening's event and uh, we're all the way from Tallahassee, Florida. The Florida a and Concert Choir is well known for the versatility of their singing styles and their diverse repertoire. The choir performs at annual fall, holiday and spring concerts and other events and tours frequently. Recent tours include performances in Washington, D.C., Virginia and Georgia. And in October 2018, the choir was featured as the Exhibition Choral Ensemble at the Florida American Choral Directors Association. The FAMU Concert Choir has performed with the Tallahassee Symphony Orchestra and the Morehouse College Glee Club. Members of the Concert Choir have performed at Carnegie Hall in New York City. Other past performances include the Unity Concert with Dr. Andre Thomas and the Tallahassee Community Chorus and Handel's Messiah with the Pensacola Symphony Orchestra. The annual Holiday Magic Concert with Broadway vocalist Sal Viviano and the Tallahassee Symphony Orchestra a recording project with hip-hop artist T-Pain, and a command performance with the world-renowned female vocal group Sweet Honey in the Rock. Dr. Mark Butler is Director of Choral Activities at Florida a and University. <clears throat> he received his undergraduate degree in music education from Florida a and a master's in music education from Florida State University, and a doctorate in choral conducting from the American Conservatory of Music in Hammond, Indiana. He serves as a choral consultant, an adjudicator for vocal competitions, and a conductor for various choral music festivals and concerts. In 2015, Dr. Butler was commissioned to serve as composer in residence and vocal consultant at the Grady Ringham Vocal Competition and Masterclass Series in Orlando, Florida. And he has served as guest conductor of the AASCA Music Festival in San Pedro Sula, Honduras, and as a conductor at the Florida Music Educators Conference. He's a published composer, and his compositions are being performed at both national and international music events.
Dr. Mark Butler and the Florida A&M University Concert Choir.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, 
Our program continues with another selection by the Tuskegee University Concert Band. The Tuskegee University Concert Band has enjoyed a long history of excellence. In 1906, Tuskegee Institute composed of a well-organized band of 35 pieces and an 18-piece orchestra. The band was part of the military department for several years and was led by Captain Elbert Williams, followed by Captain N. Emerson Perkins. In 1931, the school of music was established under the leadership of William L. Dawson, and the band became a component of the newly formed department. In the 1940s, the School of Music became the Department of Music, still headed by Mr. Dawson, and Captain Dry held the title of Director of Bands. Subsequent directors have been Dr. William P. Foster, Dr. Lucius Wyatt, Mr. Edward Graves, Mr. Ronald Sargent, and Mr. Warren Duncan, Chair of Tuskegee University's Department of Fine and Performing Arts. Mr. John Culinar, the band's current director, earned his B.S. degree in music education at Florida a &M University, where he was a member of the famed Marching 100 Band. He has served as a high school band director in Tuskegee and in Homestead, Miami, and Orlando, Florida. A talented musician, he has appeared in Europe and the Caribbean and has performed with many well-known artists, including Wynton Marsalis, the Ohio Players, Brian McKnight, and the Count Basie Orchestra. His career continues to evolve with his appointment as director of bands at Tuskegee. The Tuskegee Concert Band is composed of capable and dedicated students. In previous years, all members were non-music majors. However, since Tuskegee University's addition of a music major to its courses of study, the band welcomes music majors as well as non-majors as it continues to develop and expand. Mr. John Culinard and the Tuskegee University Concert Band performing John Philip Sousa's The Stars and Stripes Forever. <laughs>
of our program, and at this time, we'll hear from the president of Tuskegee University, Dr. Lily D. McNair.
the same. This is Warren Duncan, former director of bands at Tuskegee University for over 43 years. I'm now chair of the Department of Fine and Performing Arts. And uh, this is our 28th annual Dawson Institute concert. So uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to still be around. And I hope you all get a chance to see this and you like what you've seen. And please enjoy yourselves. Enjoy the CD, the DVD, whatever y'all putting together. Please do that and support this lovely institution. Thank you very much. See you next year. It is my distinct honor and ple pleasure to honor a man who needs no introduction. Warren L. Duncan served as the director of bands at Tuskegee University for more than 40 years. With his band of volunteers, he has an unmatched record of adept arrangements, spectacular sound, and pristine performance. With feet firmly planted in this ground of excellence, we propel to higher grounds and higher heights in a burgeoning performing arts department. To ensure its legacy of perpetuity, we endeavor to attract the brightest musical minds. Therefore, we, my husband and I, tonight, Establish the Warren L. Duncan Scholarship.
come up and receive the uh, following award, appreciation award, and it reads presented to Shari Stoudemire for outstanding service and dedication to the Tuskegee University Alumni Concert Choir. It's to be noted, there you are. It's to be noted that she was on staff with Dr. Finley, and she was set up our arrangements, you know, whether the rehearsal rooms and stuff like that, you know, all the logistics. So, I want to say, Shari, thank you for all the years that you worked and helped us to be comfortable. And thank you so much. young man has been supportive of the alumni choir uh, ever since he got out of school and we like Mr. Ransom Davis Jr. Yeah. very much ladies and gentlemen. Hello, my name is Dr. Cordelia Anderson, and I'm the assistant professor in vocal studies at the Alabama State University. And it has been a pleasure to be here for the Tuskegee, the William Dawson Tuskegee Institute here with the several different choirs that are here. And it has such a rich legacy that I have known since I've been an undergraduate singing with the Alabama State University Choir and now teaching our students and having them experience the same rich legacy that's here in Tuskegee at Tuskegee University. Hello, my name is Dr. Christopher Sanchak and I am the Director of Choral Activities at THE Alabama State University. I was first uh, exposed to William Dawson many years ago as an undergraduate at Penn State University. Uh, my director there, Lynn Drayfall, had us do the arrangement of Ezekiel Saw the Wheel. And ever since that point, I fell in love with William Dawson's music. And to be able to be here where he taught and had such a long legacy as a composer, as a conductor, as just a, the dean of African American composers, it's a real privilege to be able to be on that same stage that he stood on. Up next is the Alabama State University Choir under the direction of Dr. Christopher Sanjak. Alabama State University has been a beacon of hope and life for the state of Alabama as it was the heartbeat of the civil rights movement in Montgomery. Its rich legacy and outstanding alumni create a tradition that is second to none. The Alabama State University Choir is its premier choral ensemble. It has toured across the United States as well as internationally in cities such as New York, Detroit, Chicago, and Nassau, Bahamas. In the spring of 2018, the choir shared the stage with artists Common, Tasha Cobb, and other luminaries in a concert celebrating the opening of the Equal Justice Initiative Museum, and also performed at the Martin Luther King 50th Anniversary Memorial Service held at Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church. Choir members continue to hold the banner high in the spirit of celebrating Alabama State's storied history and its 151 years of excellence both in and outside the classroom. Dr. Christopher Sanchak, the choir director, serves as assistant professor and director of choral activities at Alabama State University. Dr. Sanchak holds a BM in composition from Pennsylvania State University, an MM in choral conducting from the University of South Carolina, and a DM in choral conducting from Indiana University. He has led choral music at several universities, including Brevard College, Holland University, the University of Indianapolis, and Indiana University, Purdue University. As a pianist, Dr. Sanchak has appeared with the Asheville Symphony, Greenville Symphony, 
Indianapolis Symphony and Montgomery Symphony Orchestras, and continues to be in demand as a soloist and accompanist around the United States. Professor Christopher Sanchak and the Alabama State University Choir.
For almost 30 years now, Tuskegee University has hosted the Dawson Institute for Classical and Folk Music, inviting lecturers and choirs from other universities to participate in honoring William L. Dawson's distinguished career and contributions. Paying tribute to Dawson is a primary purpose of the Dawson Institute, but it has other purposes as well. For example, it reminds us that Tuskegee University has a tradition in the arts and humanities as well as in the sciences, agriculture, and engineering. William L. Dawson is, of course, an extremely important part of that legacy in the area of music. There are also other notables in the arts and humanities who have a Tuskegee connection. The renowned photographer Paige Pope served as the university's official photographer. The Pope family has donated his personal collection to Tuskegee University. Visual artist Nelson Stevens was an artist in residence at Tuskegee. The university has also an impressive literary heritage, beginning with Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery, a brilliant example of the autobiographical genre. A number of writers have been associated with Tuskegee, including Nella Larson, Melvin Tolson, Rita Dove, and of course the eminent Ralph Ellison, author of Invisible Man, one of the most significant works in American literature. Another gifted writer with close Tuskegee ties is Albert Murray, who was a Tuskegee graduate and faculty member, and went on to become a perceptive and respected novelist, <coughs> cultural critic, and jazz expert. A permanent exhibition honoring Albert Murray's life and work is on display at Tuskegee University's library. Murray and Ellison, who were friends, were both great lovers of music. In fact, Ellison enrolled at Tuskegee initially to study music. Like Dawson, Murray and Ellison had a special affinity for the richness of the African American musical tradition and an appreciation for the folk and classical music of all traditions. Once again, we'll hear from the Tuskegee University Concert Band performing Ed Huckabee's From Whom All Blessings Flow.
At this time, we will hear the Tuskegee University Golden Voices Concert Choir, directed by Dr. Wayne Barr. The Tuskegee Choir is an organization steeped in more than a century of pride in the richest of choral traditions. Since its inception, the Tuskegee Choir has served as an artistic model while carving its place in American history. The school choir was developed in 1886 because Booker T. Washington had determined that the Institute was in need of a group of singers who could lead vesper services and sing for special campus occasions. A new era began for the Tuskegee Choir in 1930 under its most renowned director and educator, William L. Dawson, the Dean of African American Choral Composers. His tenure was marked by performances for the grand opening of Radio City Music Hall, for President Herbert Hoover and President-elect Franklin D. Roosevelt at Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C., and for a host of television and radio programs. The choir has since appeared at many prominent concert halls and auspicious occasions. It has performed at Carnegie Hall. It was invited to the National Christmas Tree Lighting Ceremony by President Kennedy and to the National Prayer Breakfast in the White House by President Clinton. On January 18, 2015, in celebration of the release of the movie Selma, the choir was invited to sing the Grammy Award-winning song, Glory, with John Legend in common on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. The Tuskegee University Golden Voices Choir continues its mission of campus service and ambassadorship through leadership at weekly all-university worship services and appearances in the community and across the nation. The choir tours annually. During the 2012 Northeastern Tour, the choir returned to Lincoln Center, marking the 40th anniversary of its 1972 appearance there as the first all-black choir to perform in that venue. The 2018 Spring Tour took the, took the Tuskegee Choir to cities in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and Ontario, Canada. The choir's repertoire ranges from Russian chant to classic literature to folk, folk songs, jazz, and gospel. As a historically black college choir, it reserves a sacred place for the Negro spiritual. The accompanist for the Tuskegee Golden Voices Choir is Ms. Brenda Schufert. She holds a Bachelor of Arts in Piano Performance from Huntington College and a Master's in Music Education from Alabama State University. Dr. Wayne A. Barr is Director of Choral Activities at Tuskegee University. He earned degrees in church music and choral conducting from Westminster Choir College. Southern Methodist University, and the University of Michigan. Under his direction, the Tuskegee Choir has toured the Midwestern and East Coast regions of the United States and the San Francisco Bay Area. The choir has also presented numerous concerts throughout the Southeast. As an organ recitalist, Dr. Barr has twice been, featured, been a featured organist at the Color of Music Festival in Charleston, South Carolina. He is co-director of the Italian Opera Study Abroad Program which offers students of historically black colleges and universities a four-week study of Italian opera with a renowned coach in Italy. As a regional conductor for the 105 Voices of History, a choir made up of student representatives of the 105 HBCUs as defined by the White House Initiative, he has prepared students and served as organ accompanists for the 2008 and 2009 Kennedy Center performances of the 105 Choir. He also served as a national conductor for the 2010 Kennedy Center performance. In February 2015, he presented concerts with the Bolivian Choir and American soloist in La Paz and Cochabamba, Bolivia, under the auspices of the U.S. Embassy in Bolivia. Dr. Barr continues Tuskegee's legacy of distinguished choral directors. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Wayne Barr and the Tuskegee University Golden Voices Concert Choir.
encouragement of every time I feel the same. and uh, I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I'm the great-grandson of Booker, Booker T. Washington. My mother is uh, Edith Olivia Washington, the granddaughter of, uh, of, of Booker and uh, Olivia uh, America Davidson. Uh, her father was Ernest Davidson Washington, Booker's younger son, the younger, younger Booker's two sons. And I'm uh, <laughs> visiting uh, from Denver, Colorado with my wife, Nhi. Did you attend Tuskegee University? No, I didn't. I didn't attend Tuskegee. I attended Howard University, got my undergraduate degree from Howard University and then uh, a master's degree uh, uh, in uh, communications from the University of Denver. Just curious, why not Tuskegee? You know, I, I really don't know. I really don't know. It, the, things just didn't didn't happen so that, uh, that uh, I came to Tuskegee for uh, for uh, undergraduate school, although I've, I've visited Tuskegee throughout my life, spending many summers here with my grandmother, uh, just across the, the street from the campus, across from the, the Lincoln Gates, and uh, enjoy getting back to Tuskegee pretty regularly. And we've had a number of family reunions here, and, and part of this visit was not only to welcome the new president to Tuskegee and Tuskegee's first woman president, but uh, to also do some planning for our next family reunion. I'm, an, I'm Antoinette Frederick. I am a 1943 graduate of Tuskegee Institute. And I'm very proud to say that I sang in the Dawson Choir and I'm now a member of the Alumni Choir here at Tuskegee University. I'm George W. Stewart, my wife Jacqueline, Dr. Jacqueline W. Stewart, and we're actually on campus for the 50th celebration of my graduation from Tuskegee um, University. It was Institute when I was here, but Tuskegee University 50 years ago. And uh, it has been awesome sharing in her great memories and meeting friends that she has not seen in 50 years. Some 50 years. Uh, and I'm going to promote her. She was the leader of her Delta line. Yes, it's Gamma Ta, Delta Sigma Theta. Mm -hmm. And uh, the concert tonight was just awesome. We're so proud of these young people and the discipline and the talent and the uh, anointing 
that they shared and of course being a part of the American Gospel Quartet Convention and much of uh, the Jefferson County sound was influenced by people who were influenced by the Tuskegee Singers years ago so we thank uh, Dr. President Booker T. Washington for his encouraging uh, not only the academia but the arts to be included in the teaching it has made all of our lives richer yes thank you, you agree? <laughs> I, I agree you agree I agree and thank you very much